You know, sometimes when you're working with a large Excel file, the number of sheet tabs can get away from you in a hurry. First, you have a couple, then maybe you add a couple more. And before you know it, well, you get the point. Even if you're a keyboard shortcut whiz or a right-click master, just finding specifically what you want in a large workbook can be some work. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a table of contents in your Excel file. A menu, if you will, that will allow your users to easily navigate large workbooks and find exactly what they're looking for without you. You can even customize the style, the layout, and font. And we're going to do this whole thing without macros. So stick around while I show you how to create a easy table of contents in your large Microsoft Excel workbook file. To begin our custom menu, we'll start with the basics. And in this case, that means starting with a hyperlink. A hyperlink is a trigger, most commonly associated with a website or even other documents. There are different types of hyperlinks, including hyperlinks to documents or websites, but also email addresses, and in our case, a place in the current workbook. To access hyperlinks, you'll want to navigate to the Insert tab, and then over to Link. When you choose the Link icon, you'll see the different types of links on the left side of the box. The first one is to an existing file or web page, and then you will see in the center options for different folders in your filing system. The first one is to an existing file or a web page. If it's a web address, you'll need to type that in to the address section of this dialog box, or if it's a document, you can select the document from your file system in the center. You also have options for creating a new document, or even establishing an email address. We'll take the one that says place in this document. And when we select that option, we'll see three areas in this dialog box. The first one is the text to display or your trigger word or alias. If you don't provide a typed in text entry, then the location is the default text to display. Now, if you have relatively involved sheet tab names, this might get to be a little onerous, so you may want to change that to something that's a little bit more recognizable. The third area of this box is the actual reference or sheet tab name that you'd want to direct your users to. And your third option in the center is the specific cell on that sheet tab. To create a hyperlink, We'll first enter some text to display instead of leaving the actual sheet tab name. And then after entering that text, we'll then select the sheet tab that we'd like to send our users to. And in our case, we'll take the second sheet. You can also provide defined names, for example, any named ranges that might exist in the current workbook. So we'll leave the selection as is we'll send them to the first cell on, the, on that sheet, and then we'll click OK. When we do, our text is displayed in the cell, and the text is blue because it is a link. And if we hold our mouse over that cell or over that link, then it will turn into a small finger. And when we click, we are then directed to the second sheet to the first cell on that sheet. If your sheets are already named, then you'll see your custom name or alias in the list of available sheets. To use this hyperlink on our multiple tab document, we'll first insert a blank worksheet and name that sheet Table of Contents, a February Expense and February Expense Notes. And if we navigate to the February Expense tab, we'll see two areas that we'd like to send our users to. The first one being the budget area, and then secondly, notes in cell E19 through 21. 
in this instance, to create the hyperlink, we first select our trigger word or alias of Feb Expense, and then navigate again to the Insert tab, and then over to Link. And when the Link dialog box appears, our trigger text shows in the Text to Display section, and then we'll select the sheet name of February Expense. In our case, the actual expense budget is located on in cell D4. And on February expense tab. And when we click OK, the link is created. You'll notice that it is blue, meaning that there's a hyperlink in the cell. And if we hold our mouse over that trigger and then click, we're then taken to the February expense tab and then to cell D4 which allows you to really customize the uh, landing location for any of your users. To create the second one, we'll do the same thing. We'll select February expense notes this time, and those notes are located in cell E19. So then we can move to the insert tab again, and then over to link, and then select the February expense tab, and then for a specific cell, E19. And when we click OK, the link is created. And when I click the link, it then takes us to the February expense cell and then down to cell E19, 20, and 21. While this easy method for creating hyperlinks works really well with workbooks with very few tabs, if you have a lot of sheet tabs, that's going to require a lot of clicking. So, Let's see if we can streamline this by once again relying on hyperlinks, but instead of selecting the hyperlink command, let's try the hyperlink formula. The hyperlink function is made up of three parts. The first part being the name of the function, of course, which in this case is hyperlink. After a open parenthesis, then the link location or address for the link. The third part of the function is a, a friendly name or the alias name that you'd like to use for a trigger. When it's all put together, it looks similar to this. And you'll notice that when I click the link, it takes me to the second sheet and then to the specific cell reference. So while we've changed up the hyperlink feature with a hyperlink function, it's still pretty manual. So let's see if we can now streamline this process so that it will accommodate the large number of sheet tabs that we have, as well as any new sheet tabs that we might add later. To create our time-saving hyperlink formula, we'll first have to prepare our table of contents. And we can do that by first adding some column names to a blank worksheet and then titling that sheet Table of Contents. Next, we'll need to add the pound sign as we'll have to include that in the formula. The pound sign simply allows the hyperlink function to point to the current workbook, eliminating the need to have a specific name of the workbook in the formula. The next thing we'll need in our next column is the name of the sheet that we'd like to send our users to. In this case, Feb expenses. And then lastly, we'll need a place to place our hyperlink. To create the hyperlink, we'll start off with the equal sign, then the name of the function. After opening the paren, we'll first click on the cell containing our pound sign, meaning that the hyperlink will always again point to the current workbook. Then we'll add an ampersand, and ampersands in formulas act as joiners. And we'll join the pound sign text with the text that's in cell C5, the name of our worksheet, Feb Expenses. Then we'll add another ampersand to join that with some text. And the text that we'll need to join that with is the specific cell address to be located on each sheet. 
And in our case, we'll want to point our users to cell D4. So we'll type that by adding an open quote, then an exclamation point, then the column, and the row. We'll close our quote, close the parentheses, and when we press enter, our hyperlink is created. So now I can move to the cell and then click the link, and the hyperlink takes me to the Feb expenses and directly to cell D4. Now in our table of contents, you'll notice that the trigger word that I'm using for the hyperlink is actually the full address of the sheet. And I can eliminate that by simply going back into the formula and then after the last quotation mark, typing in a comma and then just pointing it back to the sheet name that exists in cell five. Now when I press enter, I see the actual name of the sheet tab that's listed in cell C5 and when I click it, the link still works. So how does this streamline the hyperlink function? Well, this just means that you can move to the next row down, type in the pound sign in our B column, then type in the next name of the sheet tab to send our users to. So in our case, we have a sheet tab that contains a pivot table for these expenses. So Feb pivot. When I press enter, the names have both been entered and I can just take my hyperlink formula from the previous cell and just drag it down. And this will adopt the name of the cell to the left, Feb Pivot, and when I click the link, it takes me to the Feb Pivot. I can format this table of contents pretty easily by using the tables function. So by selecting the cells with my hyperlink functions, pound signs, and name of the sheet, I can then move to the insert tab and then choose directly below table. If I choose table, I'm then presented with a dialog box that shows the range that I'd like to uh, use for my table. And when I click OK, I get alternating colors as well as a little formatting for my table, along with some of the data analysis features, including sorting, and filters. Or you could try your hand at freestyle formatting. And when you do, you can also add one additional feature to your table of contents that your users will really find helpful. And that is a linked preview of anything that's on the sheet tab that they are hyperlinking to. To create a linked picture, you just navigate to the sheet tab containing the item that you'd like to display. In our case, I'll move to the Feb Pivot sheet and then select all of the information that I'd like to preview on the table of contents. Then I'll move to the copy button and click copy or control C. And then I'll move back to the table of contents, select the cell where I'd like to paste my linked picture and then right click and from the shortcut menu, choose linked picture. When you do, a copy of whatever is on the sheet is presented and with a little formatting, you now have a preview that changes any time that the information on that sheet changes. You can also format these linked pictures so things like grid lines don't show. And since they're a picture, you can place them any place on the spreadsheet that you like. So that's a quick way of creating navigation in large workbooks so that your users can easily find what they're looking for. Now, we did the whole thing without macros, which eliminates the need for your users to enable macros and see that message every time that the file is open.
I hope you found that helpful. Until our next video, thanks for joining me. And I'm Wayne. Thank you.